You're listening to Impact Implosion on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Well, anyways, we got to talk about some news, and I wish we had some sad news music because it would be Winter's appropriate gone. right now. Yeah. Winter's gone. Yeah, for some reason. Yeah. Ever, this was going to happen eventually. It wasn't a big surprise, but it's still a downer for me. Well, she'll pop back up somewhere eventually. Yeah. It had nothing for her in TNA. Angelina and Velvet are both gone, and that was her big storyline there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, also, Kurt Angle... Well, someone said Kurt Angle was injured at a house show, but you'll find out later that I'm not really too believing on that one. Nope. And finally... Dang it. Come on. Slow internet today. Yeah? Yeah, slow internet. Oh, all right, what was the thing? Oh, yeah, Luke Gallo signed with TNA. Oh, so maybe he's not one of Aces and Aces. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. Maybe that's why they did that. Yeah. And apparently there is some video of uh Tara on a t- uh, local, like, you know, UHF TV show, uh, moonsaulting the TV, the host. Huh, <laughs> huh. <laughs> yeah. That sounds great. Yeah, it does. Anyways, I don't think we even need to do a tournament wrap-up of the Bound for Glory series since tonight's the final day. Right. So, anyway, let's get started with the show. We open up with last week's action of Aces and Eights, talking about, yep. and we talk about the final two matches in the Bound for Glory series tournament. I believe the show opens with all of this, and then basically... We have Jeff Hardy versus Samoa Joe. Yes. Yep. This was a good match. It was. And surprisingly, a lot of people would, Jeff Hardy got a submission. Well, it looked like a side headlock, but anyway. And, and they really worked this in, bro, because if you remember, Magnus, uh, hurt that arm and they basically used that story. So that's how Jeff gets uh, a submission. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yep. So Jeff gets a submission. Magnus based, uh, no, because of Magnus uh, in parts. So Jeff Hardy is now guaranteed into the Bound for Glory series. AJ is officially eliminated because there was, someone told me, some chance he could get in if Jeff Hardy lost and either Bully Ray or RVD got DQ'd. So oh, he's uh, officially about the out. same bit they did last year with Rude. Yeah, but he, so he's officially out. And Jeff Hardy's in, so, and with that victory on Samoa Joe, Jeff Hart, jo- James Storm is guaranteed the number one spot, so he gets to choose his opponent later on. Backstage, we have the world heavyweight champion Austin Aries confronting Hogan about all this bullshit going on. Yeah. Hogan says, He's the world champion, so he has a huge target on his back. And then says, the little guy that knocked, knocked out Ares last week will be at his disposal tonight because he was a member of the crew. And for some reason, he decided to show up at the arena. Idiot. Yeah, you're a dumbass. <laughs> they know who you are. You shouldn't have <laughs> shut up. And now you're gonna, now you're gonna get tortured for an hour and a half. Good work, guy. Yeah. Anyways, the champs asks if he can get him to, Chip asks if he can't get him to talk by diplomatic means. What happens then? And Hogan says, break his legs old school style. <laughs> yeah, Hogan doesn't give a crap. Right. Then, what do we have afterwards? Oh yeah, Matt, we had Samoa Joe being interviewed by Christy Hemi. She, me mm-hmm. talking about how he lost tonight, and apparently Magnus shows up. And Magnus explains why he lost his temper. He said he does do a little heelish, but says they're good. He le- he, he pretends leaving, but when Samoa Joe turns his back, Magnus attacks him from behind. Mm-hmm. 
So, oh yeah, Ed and Hogan now find because Hogan's back as GM instead of Sting, somebody gets to do the je- their actual job. You know, uh, Sting disappear too. I don't know, but is he in the Raptor somewhere? Is he in the Raptor ri- somewhere? Who knows? But good riddance. He wasn't mm. a very. <laughs> Anyways, Hogan talks with their group of tag team guys, Chavo Guerrero and Hernandez, the Robbies. Why are they in this? No, <laughs> they're not a legitimate tag team. I agree. Um. Who's Kid Cash and Gunner? Gunner. Speaking of not legitimate tag teams. Yeah. Team, basically, <laughs> your tag team themselves. None and of these teams are legitimate teams, but then again, TNA has no legitimate tag teams other than... Well, they really don't, actually. Well, they have, uh, Gu- they have Kazarian and Daniels, who's made a name for themselves now. Yes, actually- the rest of these teams have only been around for, like, a month. Yeah. AJ and Styles, well, yeah. he wants to be, he wants to be part, he wants to throw his name in the bat against Kaz and Daniels. But Hogan says, okay, you're immediately eliminated because you have no partner. Whoops. Yeah. If you're showing up to a thing for tag team titles without a partner, what do you expect to happen? Yeah. Uh, dude, no, uh, I can't <laughs> let you have two belts. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, AJ. Nice try, though. Yeah. Uh, AJ is off, but... And so we go to the back with Brooke talking to Tara to let her know that she's going to get a knock- another shot at Tess Mocker's title tonight. Gail well, Kim no then said... I know surrender yeah, you mean, right? Well, she was talking about tonight, but Gail Kim calls Brooke a joke and says she's pushing real talent behind for eye candy. Uh... Tara's not, Tara may be eye candy. Tara is as much eye candy as you are, Gail Kim. I mean, she happen can to have talent. Yeah, she can actually kick your ass. Right. So, instead, they set up a match for Gail Kim versus Tara tonight, so the winner and the winner will face Brooke Where's at... Where's Gail Kim in the last two months? I don't know. I don't know where anyone's been for the. They come and go. Back from like, oh, show. look, Gail Kim, you showed up tonight. You get a match. Terry, okay. you get a title shot. Yeah. <laughs> then the knockouts ref, Taryn comes into the ring. So it's officially her job now to referee the knockouts. Yes. We had a short match between Tara and Gail Kim. Tara wins. Um, not shocking. What? The not shocking. Yeah, not shocking. So basically, it's going to be Terror versus Miss Testmacher at the pay per view. It's a pay per view this week, or it's this week. So we're going to have to review that. We're going to have to preview that before or the end of the night. Mm-hmm. Anyways, we get a video package of Joey Ryan. Hooray. The, yep. And Al Snow's heading to the ring. Yep. Yep. We then come back. Al Snow's in the ring. Calling out Joey Ryan. Saying, hey, I'm going to give you another shot. Joey Ryan comes out. Kind of tiptoes on the fact that he really shouldn't have to have another shot since he already won. He already, well, he was the 80 per- Five percent. So, Al Snow says, "Look, you're not get, you're not getting immediately in. You got to do this gut check, and it's simple this time. All you got to do is win a match. If you win a match, you're in. If you don't, so if you don't, you're not." Ryan accepts this. Al Snow reveals he's Joey Ryan's opponent, and, and slaps- Ryan leaves. No, he slaps Joey Ryan in the mouth. Joey Ryan bails the ring and says he's going to sue the company. I don't work here. I'm going to sue you. But, um, Joey, you realize if you win, you can work here. Yeah, but if he loses, no. it's sue. <laughs> yes, it's a lawsuit to a company with no money. Yeah. 
Hmm, good idea, Joey. Yeah, I hope you fully- get Lionel Hutz as a lawyer. Yeah, Joseph Parks is in his office. <laughs> Bully Ray comes in to ask if he has any leads. Parks says he's not allowed to talk about it because of attorney-client privileges, but he has not found anything. Mm. And Bully says, I know these guys, they're tough. They know these type of guys, just be careful. Kind of hinting that Bully Ray's responsible for all this again. Right. Then we have Austin Aries backstage with the guy that attacked him last week tied up to a chair. Aries says, yeah, I'm going to torture you if you don't start talking. Commercial break, we go to Hogan. And Robbie E says the other two tag teams have been a team for four weeks, while him and Robbie T have been a team for a while now. Yeah, except but you have only had like, except you only have like two tag matches in all. I know. He's more your, and, he's more your Kevin Nash than you guys are a team. Yeah, and then but Hogan and Hogan in the end decides cash and gutter are out, and the other two teams are in the finals of his decision. Mm. Then we Which get to bull- believe it very obvious who's going to get picked, but you know, yeah. Then we had the other Bound for Glory series match, Bully Ray versus RVD. Winner of this match goes into the turn, the final four. Loser is done. Mm. Good match. This is a good match, yes. Yeah. And a really great ending. RVD does the whole, R- R- tries to go for the five star frog splash. Five star frog splash. Five star frog splash. I know, I know, I. Five Star Frog Smash does the whole R Rob Van Dam a lot, which allows Bully Ray to get up in enough time to while while he's pre- about to do the Five Star pro- Frog Splash, Bully Ray hits him with the Bubba Cutter, the Bully Cutter, Bully Cutter, yeah, and pins him for the one two three. Great ending, by the way. I know we, I know I could say the. The Orton one on uh, Evan Bourne was better because, let's be honest, Evan Bourne was was doing a shooting star press instead of a frog splash. Yes. Yes. Harder to But in the end, (laughs) RVD is out. And Bully Ray... Then we have the Aries Hogan Torture Hour. Oh God! I, I fast forwarded this. Aries is talking to the guy that they call Mike. He refuses to talk. Aries slaps him around, then is about to go freaking saw on the guy since he grabs a pair of pliers. And you want to play a game? Out, yeah, rip out his tongue before Hogan comes in and stops him. But instead of stopping the beatdown, Hogan gets in on the action and threatens to rip out the guy's eyeball. Talk about, hey, talk about someone who should be pursuing legal action. It's the, it's this poor guy. Yeah, poor guy. Jesus. <laughs> I'm rip my tongue out or my eye. What the hell? <laughs> Seriously. He should be, he should be going up to Joseph Park for a lawyer. I know. Or find anyway, Clarence Mason. Aces and Eights call Hogan on his phone, and they're willing to make a trade for the guy who broke Ares' arm. Maybe that, or maybe the fact that, you know, they don't want to freaking see torture. Well, unfortunately, this guy's night would get much worse at the end of the show. Yeah, anyways, back to the ring. James Storm comes out. He says it's and time a pretty for... Good promo. His- Opponent. Yeah, he does. It's been one hell of a co- roller coaster ride. And he's gone from world heavyweight champion to sitting at home. He talks about overcoming all the competition to be at the very top of the final four and calls the other three to the ring. He th- chooses Bully Ray. Predictable. Which means we get Joe and Hardy in a rematch. Yep. 
Although, which is interesting because last year's Bound for Glory series semifinals was... Storm and Boy Ray and Rude and Gunner? Yeah. So Storm and Bully Ray were in that. (laughs) Versus each other last year. So nice that they bring that up. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Backstage, after another commercial break, we have Christy talking about to Bob Van Dam and about his loss. And yet again, Magnus shows up. He insults RVD or BVD as I call him and says Bob that Van he Dam. was in his prime but it seems he's not there anymore. Van Dam um, takes- I'm going to cut you off and say RVD's prime was like 13 years ago. Agreed. Van yeah. Dam takes offense to this and the two comes to blow Tom come to blows before officials have to break them up. Then we have Hulk Hogan backstage with the remaining two tag teams after he got done almost torturing a guy. I'm not going to get over the fact that Hogan almost went jigsaw. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how we're going to use our champion for the night. We've got nothing for him for the pay-per-view, so we're just going to have him abuse this guy for no reason. Well, no, uh, he, di- he didn't have no reason, but... <laughs> freaking. Still no yeah. reason, not not a good reason to abuse the guy. The guy. No, it's a good enough reason to abuse the guy. Not a good enough reason to try to rip out his tongue or his eye. To try to friggin' kill him. Yeah, oh, Jesus. There's never a good reason for that. Anyways, he chooses Chavo Guerrero and Hernandez to face the tag champs. This is a good match. match. Next. And it yeah, was a good it was. One. It was a good one. Um. The co- they had a commercial break in between the action. In the mm-hmm. end, the team, the, the peels used their belt to get the one, two, three on Hernandez and Chavo. So, but it's gonna yeah. go from bad to worse for them. Yeah, Hogan comes out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Torture McGee comes out. <laughs> watch, uh, wa- uh, uh, watch your tongues, Daniels and Kaz. Yeah, watch your tongues in your eyes. <laughs> or any other limbs that Hogan might rip off tonight. He seems to be in that kind of mood. <laughs> Anyways, yes. Hogan congratulates them on their shady victory. He says that AJ Styles thinks he can defeat them both in a handicap match. The heels say Hogan no, doesn't. and Hogan agrees with them. So he instead Wait, makes faith in your top baby face, Hogan. Yeah, uh, defeat them in a handicap match. You know, nah. Yeah, it's it's a it's a handicap match. To be fair, sure it's a handicap, handicap it, match against the tag champs. You, if he wins, you bury the tag champs. So really, no. Anyway, yeah, a rematch from like four months ago. Actually, last month. No, last month it was anniversary. Yeah. Oh, oh, it was. Okay. So anyways, we got a rematch where AJ Styles is going to partner up with Kurt Angle to take on those two. We also learned that TNA has added RVD versus Magnus and Terra versus Tess Mocker for the knockouts title. And Sanjay Dutt versus Zima Ion. Oh yeah, they added that too. For some strange reason. Yeah. You gotta get some people to choose. Choose the guy that's not on the TV. Yeah. Anyways, Ares is shown walking with their pri- his prisoner. It's the ring. Then we have the ballad of New York Mike and the Big Hammer dude. Oh God. <laughs> yep. Uh. Ares come brings out Mike. And says, it's time to make a deal. The champ calls him a pathetic, sorry excuse for a man. And since, and he wants the guy who tried to break his arm. Since he's tired of getting railroaded from behind, to which a couple Mm. of guys in the crowd snicker, Aries notices (laughs) and says, yet again, aces and eights seem to be taking their time. So, I'm going to beat your poor ass up. Mike? <laughs> hey! 
Yeah. So he starts. What did I do to you, Aries? Yeah, Mike almost actually spills the beans, but the dude that <laughs> broke his arm comes out and busts him in the head. Busts poor Mike in the head with a hammer because he hasn't had a bad enough night already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope you got. I hope you've got insurance, Mike. <laughs> Seriously. I hope you got a good doctor. You're gonna need him. Yeah. You're also gonna need psychological help because you almost lost your eye, your tongue. You got hit in the head with a hammer. You had a bad night. I hope he. I hope he. I hope he goes. To, I hope he sues TNA. <laughs> he would. Should. <laughs> Anyways, the two. They wouldn't have the Jesus. money to hire attorneys. They, the two trade punches in the middle of the ring as we go off air. So that's also added. Austin Aries versus the the big dude. The big with hammer, the hammer guy. Yep. If I had a hammer. Big hammer, brother. The ha- the hammer. Yeah. Valentine? Yeah, not the Valentine, but... Anyways, uh, someone also mentioned that TNA will air a one-hour special titled Countdown to Bound for Glory next month at 7 uh, yep. p.m. So, that yeah. was Stevie J. Yep. And a uh, nice of Stevie J to remind me of the botch I made when I said fried star frog legs. <laughs> or frogs. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Fried <laughs> I star apologize. frog splash. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Best botch ever. Yeah. Anyways, we got to talk about the TNA No Surrender card, which has seven matches in all. And after well, first, the last three pay-per-views being really good, this one looks very meh. <clears throat> I don't know. I like some of the matches. Um, First off, we got to start off with a match that has nothing at stake. RVD versus Magnus. Just throw these guys on the card. Yeah, Bob Van Dam's gonna win. <laughs> we gotta get Van Dam's heat back somehow. Yeah. Hold on. Thinking of matches thrown on the card. We have the X Division title match. See my eye on defending his belt against the guy he spray painted in the face. Well, not spray painted, but sprayed in the face at Ultimate X. Uh, Sanjay Dutt. Now, I thought Sanjay Dutt wasn't returning, and I've heard that Sanjay Dutt is not coming back to TNA, so I'm going to well, predict you... Zima Ion wins this one. I know Zima Ion and Sanjay Dutt had some house show matches over the weekend, so... Yeah, so yeah. I, 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 I've i been hearing that Sanjay's not... I They don't know, but Sanjay may uh just stay out of TNA. For, this is just probably a short-term thing, so... I'm predicting Zima Ion right now. Even though I think Sanjay, Sanjay damn well deserves that belt for all the crap he's taken. I, I would say, yeah, I'm gonna say Zima Ion too because I think obviously they've got plans in store for Jesse Sorensen whenever he comes back. <laughs> Which is a freaking year! Well, when was the injury actually? Wasn't it like March? March or February, yeah. It's February, so he'd be back. Let's yeah, see. Brooke's freaking back, dude. It's it's freaking September. You gotta do Man, something he... until then. It's the X Division. It's Latin direction for years. Yeah. Anyways, the next match is one that was announced at the end of the show, really. Uh, Austin Aries confronts the Big Hammer guy. Time filler. We have nothing yes, for our champion. Time filler. I don't even think it's really going to be a match or a pinfall or something. It's going to be a fight. It's going to be a fight, and I think the big dude's going to be revealed to be Luke Gallows. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah, so that or that, and it's probably going to have shenanigans. Yes. So let's talk about the match that was the tag title match, a rematch of a match that apparently a lot of people said was really good. That's Daniel Cesarian versus defending their belts against Styles and Angle. This will probably be the match of the night. It might, but I, I worry because I am hearing that Kurt Angle was is banged up a little bit. So uh, I don't. 
it's not the first time Angle's put on the match tonight when he hasn't been 100%. Well, it's his legs, really. That's the big issue. It's his legs. Kurt, take some time off. I know. I predict Kazarian and Daniels are going to retain the belts. Yes, and the never-ending feud with AJ and Daniels continues. And maybe Angle gets taken out of this match. Okay. That would actually make some sense. Then we have the knockouts title match. Terror versus Miss Tessmacher. I really would love to see Terror win and maybe her and Tessmacher feud for like a month or two, a month going in the bound for glory. I think Tessmacher already had that. She needs to get some of her heat back after they stupidly decide to give the belt to Madison Rain and that crap. Yeah, but who the hell does she face at Bound for Glory then? Uh, Mickey James. Where the hell? Who hasn't been on TV in like three months? Uh, I know. Months. I know. <laughs> People pop in and out. Seriously, they do. Just stopping by. We're just in the neighborhood. We need a paycheck. Anyways, now we have the Bound for Glory series matches. Joe and We're Hardy. Have- Joe and Hardy Joe- could be good. It'll get more it time could. than it did tonight. And unfortunately, I actually think, I think maybe Samoa Joe wins this one, but I could see Jeff Hardy winning this thanks to Magnus. I have a feeling Jeff Hardy wins, and we have Joe and Magnus at Bound for Glory. So, well, no, I know Joe's gonna not win the whole thing. Joe's gonna face Magnus at Bound for Glory. So. I think Joe might make the finals, but... And I think Bully Ray's going to beat James Storm again. Really? So yeah. you're, th- you're saying Bully Ray and Joe? I'm going to disagree and say Storm and Jeff Hardy. And we'll I see think who's Bully- right. And I think Bully Ray's going to win the whole thing. So you're saying it's going to be Bully Just Ray versus... Sealed Aries? as leader of Aces and Eights. So what do we do with Storm then? Will we kill his heat again? Storm, Storm gets screwed by Robert Roode. And we have that in the non-title feud at Bound for Glory then. Yes. I could I could see that. I could I could see liking that actually. But I still say it'll be Storm and Hardy in the finals, so. Mm. It's a toss up actually, I'd say. Yeah, I think Bully, I just think Bully Ray's gonna win this, cause they, they've been high on him for a while. And with all the suspicion, it just seems like he's gonna be revealed to be the guy who ends up being the leader of Aces and Eights. Alright. So, that's all for the show. You're listening to Impact Implosion on the Angry Marks Podcast Network.